Hello, 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 cheers, motherfuckers, because that's what we do in metal. We call people motherfuckers that we like. I don't know why that is, but those are the rules. Cheers, it's Rory back again. I say back again, I haven't done a YouTube video for a very, very long time, but I am here to talk about my 2020 albums of the year. Cheers to you. Ooh, I've got a beer, I'm an adult, I'm odd. Anyway, so yeah, uh, if you've read the Dinosaurotops Facebook page, uh, over the last week or so, you'll see that I've already published my albums of the year list there. So if you don't listen to this, just go there and just see. If you don't care, then why are you watching anyway? But yeah, I just thought I'd just verbally run through uh, quickly my top 20 of the year. It's been a fantastic year. Uh, I'm bored at home on a Saturday night. Uh, girlfriend's, uh, well, being a nurse, saving lives, you know, that kind of boring stuff. Um, give her a clap, everybody. Yeah, give her a clap. Um, because they love that, the nurses. <laughs> they prefer you to clap than uh, to vote for government to support them, apparently. <sighs> anyway, so yeah, top 20 of the year, fantastic year. I'm going to start on number 20 with End Splinters from an Ever Changing Face. Uh, End are sort of a super group collaborative project spearheaded by the one and only Will Putney of Fit for an Autopsy and producing loads of great metal fame. This album is just really disgustingly heavy and um, I've actually hurt myself listening to this album because it's just it makes you want to spin kick an old lady in the face. More than usual, I mean. Number 19, we have Clipping. Visions of bodies being burned. Clipping are an experimental hip hop uh, outfit that combine sort of horror soundtrack, avant-garde noise with amazingly dexterous virtuosic rapping. Uh, that covers all kinds of dark, sinister themes from the more sort of traditionally horror-based things to much more terrifying, realistic, uh, urban accounts of violence and poverty and desperation. Uh, you're not going to hear any other hip-hop album like it this year. And the one they released last year, uh, There Existed an Addiction to Blood, uh, is also well worth your time. So, next we have, at number 18, Mjerka. Do we have Mioka? No, we don't. No, that's the next one. Next we have at number 18, Spirit Adrift. Um, with Enlightened Through Eternity. Uh, Spirit Adrift also released an amazing album last year that made my top 20. Uh, they started off uh, very much uh, combining sort of doom metal and stoner metal with classic heavy metal. Now they've gone, you know what? Doom metal, stoner metal, everyone's doing that. Right. Let's make a classic heavy metal album that's not really cringy and cheesy and stupid. And they've done that, and this is the best album they've done. And um, to be honest, I probably would have put it higher up my list because I've absolutely been smashing that over the last few days. Just brilliant, brilliant heavy metal. Well worth your time. Hooks all over the place and the vocals are so much better than they were on the other albums as well. Brilliant. They're going to be huge. They're going to be huge. Uh, then we have Mjerka. Jumping the gun a little bit. Uh, with Folk and Sanger, I think that's how you pronounce it, I don't know, I can't pronounce any of Mirka's albums, but she is the Danish one-woman black metal folk project. Uh, this is the third album, this strips away the metal elements and just sticks to the folk, and uh, I really like it. If you're not massively into folk, then you're really not going to like it, but uh, it's been a regular mainstay of my playlists, and as these dark winter nights draw in, uh, it feels even more appropriate. Uh, so beautiful, haunting nordic joy and speaking of beautiful and haunting um the last track on this album is beautiful and haunting but uh, the rest of it is just pure great meat and potatoes life affirming heavy metal i'm talking of course about the super group killer be killed and their album reluctant hero second album the first one that came out about four years ago self-titled album was absolutely amazing this one's even better um, featuring Troy Sanders of Mastodon, Greg Pacciato, formerly of the Dillinger Escape Plan, and Max Cavalera of Sepultura and Soulfly, uh, joined now by Ben Collar from Converge. These are four incredible musicians, just kicking back, having a good time, but it never sounds self-indulgent because these are some of the best in the game and they would never put out a sub-part product. And believe me, they do not hear. Uh, absolutely brilliant. Uh, just, Just great metal, really. You know, if you want a straight ahead heavy metal album, uh, then I wouldn't bother with that Lamb of God album. It's bang average. This is the one to go for. This is the one to go for. Then we have Ensiferum coming up with Thalassic. 
think that's how you say it. Uh, Enterferum, a Viking folk metal band. I only really like the first two albums. Uh, the other stuff I can take or leave, but this is the best thing they've done since those first two albums with Yari, who went on to form Winter Sun. The reason it is the best since then is because it adds different elements. There's much more variety to it. It's got a, conce a conceptual thing running through it of like battles at sea. So this is a Viking sort of, I like Vikings, a Viking narrative, but from the perspective of the longboat, fighting sea monsters and pirates and invading things and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun, really. It gets the balance right. And also they've got a new keyboard player and singer who does the clean vocals, um, who's got a wonderful sort of uh, Halloween style, Michael Kisk power metal voice. And used sparingly, it really makes songs pop. Uh, there's just a, it's just perfectly balanced and a lot of fun. And speaking of a lot of fun, speaking of folk metal, staying on the uh, Scandinavian shores, we have Fintroll with their first album in a long old time uh, that I'm not gonna try and pronounce, but it's, I'll put it in the description anyway. And last Fintrell album, they went sort of in a black metal direction and it was all right, but it's not what I want from Fintrell. I don't want yeah, the forest there. I want like, you know, I want that, but I also want to have a little hoedown, have a little jig. And they brought the jig hoedown aspect back into the equation, kept the black metal heaviness. And what you've got is 38 minutes on a haunted ghost train deep into the woods and um, we're about to jump off that ghost train and have a little little boogie with the goblins and the wizards and the orcs and the elves. And if that sounds like a good time to you, then you're my kind of person. If it doesn't sound like a good time to you, then you're probably not a virgin. Uh, but nonetheless, Fintroll, great album, great band. Good to have you back, Fintroll, really love you. Speaking of good to have you back, although they've not really ever gone away, is Paradise Lost, the British doom metal veterans and legends. Uh, coming in with Obsidian, this album is great because it combines all the eras of Paradise Lost, the early sort of doom death metal stuff, the mid-period arena stomping, thought they were going to be the next Metallica at one point kind of stuff that you'd find on Draconian Times, and then uh, the more one-second cool Depeche Mode sort of synth-pop kind of things. Uh, it touches on every single era and does it to an incredibly high standard, and they've not really had that all in one place on one album. In a lot of ways, it's the most consistent album. Some people call it the best album. I'm not one of those people, but I can see where you'd make an argument for that. And to be fair, it's the 17th album. Uh, to be this far in your career and this on fire, a round of applause, chef's kiss, mwah. Brilliant album, I could not leave it out. Uh, next, we've got Fiona Apple with Fetch the Bolt Cutters. Fiona Apple is somebody that's not as prolific as Paradise Lost, somebody that likes to take their time between releases, but someone who's always releases something that's worthwhile. This might be our best work. Uh, this album is absolutely incredible. Uh, there's a lot of piano-based female singer-songwriters. Uh, they get a lot of critical acclaim from cool mags like Vice and whatever. And <sighs> there's levels to this game. And she is just in a complete category of her own. There's nobody like Fiona Apple. She is one of the only handful of uh, living musical geniuses we have. And uh, she's absolutely on fire on this. Can't recommend this album enough. It's, it's whimsical. Uh, it's dark. It's angry. And it's just funny as well. There's, the, there's so much... Uh, it, she's so casually brilliant. Uh, it, it's maddening. Um, but yeah... This is going to top loads of end of gear lists and it's going to absolutely clean up at the Grammys, as it should, because it is phenomenal. Oh, lovely. So next, um, speaking of phenomenal, is one of my favourite artists, Emma Ruth Rundle. Um, sort of a post-rock singer-songwriter, incredible guitar player, even better singer, collaborating with sludge metal southern overlords, they call Thou. Um, with the album May Our Chambers Before, this was originally a collaborative project set up at the Roeburn Festival that's progressed into a full length album now. And this is everything I like about those bands, smushed together. Um, and it produces something slightly different. So you've got sort of almost like a 90s alt rock album, but with really disgusting heavy sludgy guitar tones. Uh, you've got the lead singer from now, I can't remember his name now, and his screamy, disgusting backing vocals in the background. Emma Ruth Rundle's damaged, beautiful voice in the foreground. And uh, what you've got is an alt-rock, post-rock masterpiece done and dusted in 36 minutes. Beautiful brevity as well. Full marks for the brevity there because I find Thou albums are often too long and hard to digest. So this is also my favourite Thou album as a result. 
Thumbs up. Next, we have uh, Oceans of Slumber. Everybody knows, well, everybody that knows me anyway, knows that I love Oceans of Slumber. Winter was my album of the year in 2016. The follow-up album, The Banished Heart, I uh, found a lot harder to get into, but once I did get into that, I realised it was just as good, if not better than Winter. Um, this one falls short of those two albums, in my opinion, uh, but it also contains material that's possibly better than anything on those albums. Um, it still continues that sort of doom, death metal, progressive metal, melancholic style that they've uh, made completely their own. By far Cammy's best vocal performance and uh, a brilliant typo negative cover of Wolf Moon at the end. The only real criticism I'd have of this album is a bit too long. Um, with this kind of dark, bleak music, it's possible to get fatigued after a while. And I do feel some fatigue by the time I get to the end of the album, but you know, it ends with Wolf Moon. And uh, I love typo negative, so really, really minor gripe. Oh, you've got too much good stuff on here. It's not a great criticism, isn't it? But you know, I've got to do something to uh, to remain some kind of object objectivity. Uh, next, we've got Run the Jewels with RTJ4. Run the Jewels, one of my favourite hip hop acts of uh, of all time. Fourth album. This would already be their best album um, without the incredible lyrics that. Uh, really capture the divided time we're living in, the uh, abysmal race relations and institutionalised uh, racism that exists in the USA, uh, is captured eloquently and brilliantly by particularly Killer Mike, who cements himself as one of the all-time great rappers on this album. Absolutely fucking phenomenal. And the fact that they can talk about such serious, painful topics uh, while still just absolutely just churning out the bangers um, is, is admirable and I just wonder how they did it. Plus, you know, Zach the Rock is on it as well again and it's good to hear his voice being angry and rapping about stuff. Um, so yeah, great album. Next we have my favourite band in the goddamn world, Nightwish. What can I tell you? If you like Nightwish, you really like this. If you don't like Nightwish, you won't like it, probably. Um, I've not really got any objectivity when it comes to Nightwish. Uh, all I can say is that Floor sounds absolutely phenomenal because she's pretty much the best singer in the world and um, loads of great Nightwish songs and also there's a half hour instrumental second disc if that's your thing and it is my thing it sounds great um, Nightwish being Nightwish and that's enough for me they're my favourite band so full thumbs up to the wish symphonic power metal for the win then we've got Molasses uh, with Through the Hollow so this is a psychedelic dark uh, avant-garde jazz rock album i guess beautiful smoky sinister brooding female vocals uh juxtaposed with slow building atmospheric uh, instrumental backgrounds uh where there's no sort of they're all traditional instruments not one of them sort of takes the lead um i've, I've rarely heard a, a backing band or just a band generally being such amazing synchronicity so it kind of builds and uh, rises and falls in such a, an intricate interesting way um it's the kind of thing it's very hard to describe as you can see because words are failing me but um molasses through the hollows i fully recommend you check that out um particularly if you're a fan of the band that most of these people were in before the devil's blood uh just yeah like nothing i've heard then we have enslaved uh, viking metal legends uh, Viking prog folk, uh, black metal legends enslaved with Utgard, one of uh, the best albums of their career. This far into their career again, uh, it's more cohesive than the last uh, few and it's done and dusted in 45 minutes and they still managed to squeeze experimentation in like um, the sort of new wave funky little track they've got going on as well in which you want to swing your axe around and uh, have a little dance around your longboats and various other Viking cliches. Apologies to people of Nordic descent. I like Vikings, but I don't know a lot about them. <laughs> Next, we have uh, a number five, Greg Pachato, uh, with Child, Child Soldier, Creator of God, his first solo album. So the second appearance of Greg Pachato in this list. And uh, this is just basically everything that's great about him. Obviously, he's a phenomenal singer, but now we know he's a phenomenal songwriter and guitarist and keyboard player as well. He plays all the instruments apart from the drums. And this just covers everything from industrial metal to Depeche Mode style synth pop 
to Layback Synthwave to Crust Punk. Um, this is just frankly breathtaking, the level of talent uh, in this guy. And uh, I fully recommend you check this one out. Then we have uh, at number, number four, Trivium, What the Dead Men Say. So Trivium, a few years ago, I thought, oh no, Trivium have fucked it, haven't they? They're not as good as they used to be. And uh, we'll still have the live shows, but you know, they just keep chopping and changing, trying different styles that don't work. But you know what? All that chopping and changing has paid off because what they've done is took the good things about those not so good albums and added them onto the things they were already good at on Shogun and stuff like that. And what we have is, well, what the Dead Men Say in the previous album, The Sin of the Sentence. This is even better than The Sin of the Sentence. Trivium are back um, in terms of a big, ballsy, mainstream metal record. You don't get better than this. You don't get better than this. Um, so Trivium are back. Back for good, baby. And they're killing it. Love that. Then, at number three, speaking of big, bold, mainstream appeal... Creeper, Sex, Death and the Infinite Void. I did not expect this to be this high up my list as much as I like Creeper. But uh, the songwriting here is absolutely astounding. Um, Will Gold's one of the best front men in the game. Uh, one of the best we've seen over the last 20 years. And um, how many bands can combine such hook-filled, uh, mainstream-ready songs with such a diverse array of sounds. There's brick pop here. There's stuff that sounds like pulp on here. There's stuff that sounds like rockabilly on here. There's stuff that sounds like doo-wop on here. And you've still got that goth punk thing that they were doing before as well. Uh, they go all over the map, but the main sort of core, fundamental appealing thing about this is phenomenal, passionate, world-class songwriting. I cannot recommend this album enough. If I was 15 and this album came out, these would be my favorite band because they've got the look, they've got the aesthetic, um, they really put effort into the concepts, and uh, well, they've just got choruses that you just want to belt out at a festival. And uh, God, I hope we get to do that next year at 2000 Trees. Number two, A.A. A. Williams, Forever Blue. Obviously, I like sad girls, uh, not in real life. Um, I dated one for a very long time and it wasn't pleasant, but... Yeah, I like sad girls, singer-songwriter stuff, and uh, I like post-rock and post-metal. If you combine those two things with incredible songwriting, with uh, an astonishing vocal performance, with dark, brooding, melancholic lyrics, I'm going to like it. If you add Johannes from Cult of Luna on one of your songs, when it goes full-on doom metal, neurosis style, and he's hollering his balls off, I'm going to love your album. And I do love this album. This is absolutely phenomenal. But... It's not my number one. What's my number one? It's Code Orange, obviously. Code Orange underneath. Uh, Code Orange are the best band in the world. Uh, they have a level of ambition, a level of perfectionism, a level of cohesion to their image, and a uh, desire to push boundaries, but also not just sit in a little underground corner of, oh, we're being really creative. Uh, you know, we don't care about the mainstream. No, they want to take that experimental thing, add massive hooks to it and take it to the mainstream and ram it down everyone's fucking throat. And I hope that they win the Grammy this year because they deserved it last time and they will deserve it again. Code Orange, they're coming to get you. I don't know what to tell you. You know, a lot of haters to Code Orange, but uh, just listen to Underneath and uh, you'll hear cutting edge, incredible, groundbreaking and... Just fantastic heavy music. So there you go. That is my top 20 of 2020. Uh, a lot of bad things happened this year. But you know, the one thing that has been absolutely on fire is music. Particularly the heavy music, uh, which is most of what I've got listed here. So, yeah. Look after yourselves. Look after each other. And uh, hopefully I'll see you very soon at a Diceratops gig. And also new Diceratops album 2021. Here is raw. Cheers. Love you. Bye. Mwah.